You know, force and torque sensing are essential to efficient modern industrial robotics. For production applications, it's not enough to simply use crushing force to grab an object, pick it up and move it someplace else. I'm with Dwayne Perry. He's Chief Sensor Technologist for ATI Industrial Automation. And Dwayne, uh, we're moving into an era now where we're asking industrial automation to operate with tremendous delicacy, but at the same time be able to also exert considerable force. That's true, that's true. And it's important that in your robotic applications that you're able to control the amount of force that you're applying. When you want to polish a part, yeah. the part may have some variances that you can't have the robot follow mm. because the, the part is, is, is not where it's supposed to be. So use yeah. force. Maybe you want to apply a constant force while you're polishing. 10 okay. newtons, perhaps. Okay. And the, the robot can follow and follow the contours and give you a nice, beautiful shine for, for your piece. Okay. Or maybe you have a peg in a whole application, you can give the force feedback to the robot and it can adjust dynamically to put together the parts that you want. Okay, this is a classic problem. Now you described um, uh, polishing applications, roughness aver average by definition is basically about achieving that mean, but to get that mean you've got to lop the peaks off those, the, the, those little mountains. Exactly, so, yes. So to do that of course you don't want to be running down the valleys and basically gouging out the bottom of those valleys either. You want to lop the tops off. And that's what would happen if you didn't have force sensing in the equation. We are introducing a new force sensor that's targeted for the UR robot line. So we've got our ATI Industrial Automation Axia 80 low-cost sensor on this robot over here. And it pairs beautifully with the uh, UR robot. Um, it's, we're part of the UR Plus program. It's a great program that UR Robots has where you can have your hardware like an app on a phone, but it's an app for the robot and we've integrated down at a low level so the robot understands what to do with our data. Now, Dwayne, for historically, in, in the grand old days of force sensing, if you will, this was always a major problem because you're buying an end effector from a specialist supplier that has force sensing capability, but you're trying to control robot motion with this. So you've got a sort of a feedback loop talking between two different languages sometimes, you've got to make them play nice together. Exactly, in the old days, when you didn't have this kind of collaboration, if I may, between the robot and the force sensor, the robot was more sluggish and couldn't do the profiles that you want to do because it was being programmed at the user level, which takes a longer time. We're now talking at the servo level, which allows the robot to react much quicker. Now, let's talk a bit about torque sensing for a moment because, of course, torque is crucial in many industrial assembly applications in particular. I come from a world in which it was strictly done by breakaway torque, which was you set a maximum limit at right. that point, the machine rammed it in until it declutched, essentially, and you had your torque. But we historically encountered difficulties where we needed a higher push-through torque, or initial torque, if you will, to seat something, and then a lower run-in torque, and then maybe a final torque to sort of snick it up to the, the correct level. And that was beyond their ability to, to, to handle that. Uh, is that the kind of thing, torque-wise, that we're, we're asking these machines to do these days? Well, they, they can do this kind of applications now when they have a forced torque sensor, because then you, you're monitoring what the robot's doing. You just say, give me a little bit more. Now I want to have, you know, one Newton meter of force, and now that I've achieved, achieved it, let's back it down a little bit, depending on the application. Mm -hmm. Now, historically, I, um, similarly, I'm thinking back to the old days where uh, if we noticed essentially that we had, we had to use increasing amounts of torque to seat something, we knew that we had a production issue with uh, alignment or a fit at this point. Is, uh, can we use this data in creative ways now, now that we can, we can detect and sense forces? Yeah, that brings up a really good point because the verification is part of the process. You, you made something, but you want to make sure that you made it correctly. Uh, most people will inspect their product after they made it. Now you can inspect it while you're making it. You look at the force levels, you look at the torques, you look for maybe, um, let's say you're putting a cap on a pen. We all can do this with our eyes shut. You put the cap on the pen and you feel that click and you know that it's gone on. Now the robot can do that kind of thing, but he can do it to more complex situations. Maybe he's putting a cap on a screw or closing a lid on a product and he just looks for that signature. So from a cost perspective, does this add a lot to the cost of, a, of say, a typical manufacturing related robot? Well, what you, uh, in this case, we're about a tenth of the price of the robot. So I think that's good for getting this kind of sensing capability on the UR robot. Dwayne Perry says, add force and torque sensing to your robot for increased productivity and efficiency.